the sprawl, news about the war. On the front lines, our homegrown heroes are holding toe-to-toe -to -toe against the treacherous Marbogians. But back in the barracks, folks from home and away are signing up to do their part. You might even find the odd Marbogian joining our ranks to fight against their own. Go get them, soldier. And get them once for me. Talk to your local Godshed operator about how you can join the Sprawl Army today. Join the Sprawl Army today. Any questions? Did you see my dad? He was there. He looked okay. No, I meant questions about the new drafting procedure. It was in the weekly update video. You mean the propaganda video? It was propaganda. You know what propaganda is? I didn't until I watched that video. Listen, people are going to come up asking about joining the army. It's your job to decide if they're a good fit, especially considering who else is coming to enlist that day. I thought my job was to decide who to let pass the gate. That's also your job. This is wartime. You have to do two things now. Well, I'm already doing an adult job, so... <clears throat> Again, they want me to do two things? I wish my dad was here. He'd show me how to get out of doing two things. Up until now, we've tolerated a two-star average with you guardsmen. Not anymore. We are dancing on a knife's edge here, so now you have to maintain a 2.5-star average, or it's game over. Oh, and if you don't draft the right people, we could lose the war. Also game over. Wait, figuratively or literally? Both. Both. Oh my god. Awkward pause. Well, I'm gonna go. You're just gonna leave after dropping something that heavy on me? Yep. Fine, I'll stay. We can tutorial some more. No. Actually, I'm starting to see the appeal of your first plan. I thought you might. Goodbye, Lil. Level 8. The Royal Writ. After months of this siege, the Sprawl's resources, namely its food stores, have reached a new dangerous low. If a guard discovers any means to improve our dwindling food supply, you are to contact either myself or Lieutenant Stryker. Failure to contact leadership will be reflected in your star ranking. Ash. Related, any individuals or groups coming from outside the sprawl who will burden our meager food supply are to be carefully vetted. Like with item one, the decision to admit anyone who fits the description should be run by either Ash or me, Stryker. Uh, best of luck to those becoming responsible for drafting individuals for service on the front lines. Remember, there's always more than meets the eye, and although it may seem like sending more people into the fray is the right idea, that is not always the case. Striker. Hey, guard yos. I'm breaking in a new assistant down here in the dungeon. Go easy on him if you get him when you call Malcolm by royal decree. Okay. So I've got plenty. So I think I'm going to be able to stock up everything. Yeah. Um, and I've even got a crystal to spare. Excuse me, ma'am. Is this the place where a fella could sign up to join that war that's going on? It is. Why? Do you know someone who's looking to sign up? Sure do, ma'am. His name is Elmer John, and you're looking at him. I'm talking about me, ma'am. Yeah, I got that. Um, okay, let's talk to him. Now, what's a guy like you doing wanting to fight in a war like this? I fight for one thing and one thing only. 
my one and only love, Glory Ann. Um, okay. That's very heroic, I guess. This Glory Ann, is she your sweetheart? She sure is. And does Glory Ann feel the same way about you? She sure does. At least, I thought she did. Uh-oh. Um. Dish the details, Elmer. What happened? Well, you see, ma'am, how it is is like... It's like this, you see. It all happened this way, it was. Elmer, faster with the dishing. More details. I'm sorry, ma'am. It's just all too painful to talk about. We were engaged to be married, and I caught her in the arms of another man. My neighbor, Bosco. Uh, I mean, he seems trustworthy How with it. How dare she? I know! So you're heartbroken and running away to war? Exactly. Uh... It means of okay, that's food supply, visual coming from outside the garden. That's like to those responsible for remember, there's always more to meet the eye, and although it seems like seeing more people in the fray may be the right idea, that's not always the case. Let's let's call Striker. Yes, we need all the help we can get out there. But I can't justify taking any more emotionally conflicted soldiers onto the battlefield. Scan this guy for any evidence that he's got a strong enough stomach for what he's about to get into. Okay. Well, he's going to be thinking about Glorianne. So I think I'm going to, because he, he's signing up, but he's signing up to get away from his life. And that's, he needs to face his issues. So I'm going to deny him. I can, in good conscience, send you to the front, Elmer. Go home, find Glorianne, and talk to her. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe I was making one of those, what do you call it, hasty decisions I always make. I'll go home and see my Glorianne, who I caught in the arms of another man, and I'll make the biggest apology banner anybody ever saw. What's an apology banner? It's the easiest way to say you're sorry. So long, ma'am. You take care now. Glory Ann, I'm a coming. Why are you apologizing if. Ah, oh, him it's again. You again. I remember you, the miserable wretch who sought me the last time I came to this repulsive, simmering carbuncle of a city. That is way too many adjectives. I remember you, too. You're that unpleasant, obnoxious Ebenezer Scrooge knockoff. Discount yes, Ebenezer Scrooge. Met. Um... It is my intention to go straight to the bank of the sprawl and have my substantial monies removed from this sinking barge of a city before the banks are overrun, or worse, sacked. Mr. Dunn just needs to hear my confirmation number, and I will have my fortune sheltered in a more rich, people-friendly nation. I got a better idea. You give me your confirmation number, and I'll go to the bank and get the money for you. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tease him on that. You really think the people of the Sprawl are dumb enough to sink their own bank? Inevitably. People flock to BS at the first real sign of danger. Yeah. But I do remember seeing his little companion down, so maybe I should call and see if I can't get well down with Malcolm. He did say he had a new This assistant. is the dungeon of Malcolm the Great? Just read the cards! Oh, okay. <clears throat> this is the dungeon of Malcolm the Great! May I take a message? 
Wait, who is this? Who is this? Lil. Oh, Lil! It's me, Will! I thought so. Listen, there's someone here I think would like to speak with you. Go ahead. Will? Is it really you? It is, Your Grace. Will, I never thought I'd see you again. Well, we are on the phone. How are you? Have you been treated poorly? Not as no poorly as No one ever treated you. me as poorly as you, sir. I miss you, Will. I miss you too, sir. Come, run away with me. We can leave this war behind us and start again with all of my money. Sir, I never cared a jot for your money. I only wanted to be with you. Oh, Wilp, my heart sings. No matter what happens to me now, I will dedicate my remaining life to you. And what about your remaining money? I'll donate it to the poor. <laughs> Just kidding, but I won't take it away with me today. Good enough. Get in there and reunite with your friend. I probably should have interrogated him one more time. True love conquers all. Way to go, Cupid. And his heart grew three sizes. Where is he? Where's that meek little slunk of a man? I have no idea what you're talking about. You have to be about. more specific. Did a hopelessly heartbroken fella by the name of Elmer John come by this way? Spouting a crazy notion like running off and joining the army? As a matter of fact, he did. Oh, Elmer John, what have you done? Tell me, did you allow that fool to throw his life away over nothing? I don't know if I'm allowed to tell you or not. I have to know if you sent him off to war, because if you didn't send him, then I'd like you to send me to get as far away from that fool as possible. Oh. I take it you're Glory Ann. If that's me, Glory Ann. Who was found in the arms the of another Glory man. same Glory Ann that was caught in the arms of another man? It's not what it looked like. And if Elmer John had stuck around for more than a second, I could have explained that to him. So what? You're sick of these wonk-headed men getting all hot and bothered and making hasty decisions over something that could have been settled by a rational conversation? Exactly! Even if that fool Elmer John is drafted as well, and he's there waiting for me with his big dumb eyes and his cutie pie dimples, it won't matter. He won't be able to smooth talk his way back into my heart after doing something so stupid like running off and joining the war. At this That's point, it doesn't matter though. if you let him in or not. Either way, I've made up my mind. But have you? Come on. You really don't want to know if he was or wasn't drafted? What if he's at home waiting for you with a big ol' apology banner that says, I'm a fool, take me back. He's run out of apology banners this time. Him and his suspicious mind. Not to mention the wartime measures prohibiting the sale of fabric for such frivolities. Yeah, um... Yeah, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna see if there's anything more to her story. I want to know what, what 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 really happened. It all started when that big loud Bosco from two houses over came round like he always does to try to court me again. I explained to him that Elmer John had asked for my hand and that I had said yes, and then Bosco explodes and says he's gonna smash Elmer's head like a jug. So I lunged at Bosco to hold him back. The big brute! That's what Elmer saw, and the next thing I know, he's crying about going off to war. Oh man. That has a whole nother depth. 
Yeah. She's gotta go back. Now, I'm not doing this because I drafted Elmer John and I'm trying to keep you apart. I understand. And I'm not doing this because I didn't draft him and I want you two to be together. Understood. I'm doing this because I don't think you fully thought this through. I'm denying your recruitment into the army. I guess I was acting a little hot under the collar there for a minute. I should go home and talk things over with Elmer and... Wait, now will you tell me? What happened to him? Did he get drafted into the war? I didn't send him to the front. I think you'll find he'll be waiting for you when you get home. Big ol' apology banner and all. Maybe he recycled an apology banner. Thank goodness! The goblin approaches whistling a happy tune. Oh, hello, Lil. Isn't it an absolutely beautiful day? Sun shining, birds chirping. Why, a gobbo could almost sing about it. Nice to see you again. You too. All right. What you doing at the gate? I'm just coming from a conference of GLA members from different nations looking to help each other out. The GLA sounds like it's thriving. Sounds like it's international, too. It sure is. Yeah, because I met them before. We made some major inroads with a sympathetic group of Petrardian miners. They've offered to dig tunnels that will bring food to the sprawl without anyone knowing. I hope we can get these plans to Queen Desdemona for her stamp of approval. Then we can get things underway. Um, yeah, I'm gonna return those so that we can... You should take these to the Queen. I'm on my way there now. Um, so, okay, so she's got plans that can help with bringing fr food in. Uh, call either myself or Lieutenant Stryker uh, to help with our food stores. Um, let's see what he. I what can't else? believe I didn't tell you. Big updates from the GLA. Queen Desdemona and her goblin lover, Chuck, have implemented all these different programs for non humans. It's a great day to be a goblin. So we've got some good um, civil rights programs going in for goblins and non-humans. And Gary is learning to become a mage! I think he got a bit carried away playing Magnus the Magnificent. I knew Desi would get it done. Desi? Desi. Queen Desdemona? I'm trying to make it a thing. Try to keep up. Okay, now I need to call. Yeah, I can call Ash or Striker. So I am going. Uh, I'm gonna call Ash. I feel like I always call Ash though. Yeah. Tunnel plans to increase our dwindling food supplies. Let him in post haste. Let him in. The city's best and brightest will go over the map and construction will begin in no time. We have food! We have food! Well done, child. Okay. And then we are going to admit. Lil, it is always a pleasure. Julian, I hope you have a fantastic day. Do you really mean that? I sincerely do. Keep up the great work, friend. Thanks, Lil. You're one of the good ones. Awesome. Alright, tunnel plans are underway. Soon there will be 
f more food for the people in the sprawl. Well done. Hey, Lil. Listen, I wanted to say I know things must be tough for you with Hamish out on the front lines and... And, and what? The fact that I have to work a full-time job at age 12? Yeah, that's gotta be tough. And the fact that I live alone on top of a dive bar? Pretty much. Well, you'll meet some interesting people. I've let in some interesting people. And the fact that my dead mom's still dead? Oof, yeah, that's pretty rough. Well, if you ever need someone to talk to, you know where to find me. I'm actually not sure I do know where to find you. I'm not sure I care. Oh, well, normally it would be at the barracks, but for the foreseeable future, I'll be running security for Her Majesty Princess... Sorry, Queen Desdemona. After you finish your shift, Her Majesty and the Royal Consort have asked to see you. Okay, um... Yeah. Well, that figures. Me and Desi are pretty tight. Who? Desi. Queen Desdemona. It's gonna be a thing. Try to keep up, Cece. Who? Cecil. Cece. You. God, it's like you're not even trying. Kids these days. She's meeting with some high-ranking member of the Mage's Guild to discuss battle strategy. To be honest, the Guild hasn't been very supportive of how Her Majesty has handled things. Yeah, to be honest, I don't really trust the Mage Guild anyway. She was looking for a bit of backup and wanted you specifically. Well, she can count on me. I hope. Well, what, who else wants the advisor that's, uh, preteen? I mean, preteens know everything, right? I hope so, too. The fate of the sprawl may rest in your hands. Scary thought. It always does, Cecil. I'll see you after my shift. Great, great. Thanks, Lil. And if you write your dad, tell him we all wish him well. I will. I know he'd love to hear it. See you later, Cecil. A familiar group of black clad folk approach the shed weeping and moaning. You must help us, child! We have been left without shelter. It's awful. Scarborough has fallen! <laughs> oh, okay, um... Let me... Talk the to Duchy them. of Scarborough has been under constant siege for the majority of the war. Those bastards! Quite. We finally had to flee. We couldn't stand it any longer. We've been without food for days. Yes, everyone is... rather hungry. That's what happens when you don't have food. Um, I do trust him. I'm but... so sorry to hear that you've had to flee your home. I can't imagine how hard that must have been. Thank you, child. I'm a duchess without a duchy. We have rather a lot of refugees that need your help and your food desperately. Well, but before I can let anybody in for... I need to know what your intentions are, because you can't just rob us of our food or eat all our food stores. I still miss my beloved Sprinkles! Boo-hoo! I've been doing my best not to fantasize about poisoning my employer lately. Must not confess crimes. Must resist child's powerful spray! Gah! Excuse me, what? All right, all right, I did it. I lowered the bridge and let those... Bastards? Right, those bastards. I let them in. It was me. <laughs> he 
He begins to sob. Oh, you sneak. You Why would are you do that? I banished from the court of Scarborough. Praetor Cargan was right. Soon the entire sprawl will fall to the might of the Marvog Empire. Oh, go away. Well spotted, Guardian. All Listen, right. I'm just doing my job. And that's how you truth spray your way to success. Excellent line, m'lady. But that was... Oh, never mind. Even with that settled, I'm still not sure what to do with these people. Alright, well let's see what the writ had. Because we need people... Uh, any individual coming from outside the sprawl who will burden our meager food supply are to be carefully vetted. Like with item one, the decision to admit anyone who fits the description should be run by either me or... Uh, Ash. Since I've called Ash before, let me call Striker this time. I spent a summer growing up in Scarborough. What happened there is a crying shame. While our food supplies remain dangerously low, with the tunnel operation unlocked thanks to you, we should just be able to feed everyone, including these refugees. You may let them in. All right. So, Striker says to admit. So we're going to admit. Bless you, dear child. Yes, thanks awfully. As I said, we are incredibly hungry. Well, just don't eat all there of our food. There should be enough food for your people. We have a new plan to bring more into the sprawl. Regardless, you are a hero in the history of Scarborough. If our lands are ever restored to us. <laughs> all right, you did the right thing. In a previous turn, you unmasked a traitor and you were kind to refugees. Where do I enlist? You're there. Here. Then what are you waiting for? Sign me up already. The name is Bosco. All right. I heard that lily-livered run Elmer John came by this way, and I want to catch up with him so I can smash his head like a jug. Um, You're just the kind of guy we're looking for, but I'll need more than just a first name to sign you up. Houlihan. Okay, Bosco Houlihan, and last thing, why do you want to smash Elmer's head like a jug? Because he's a fool. Given that I've already heard from both of them, uh... I think I, I trust that that would be his I interpretation. Trust it's common practice to go around smashing people's heads like jugs where you're from? Only if they're dumb enough to run away from a quality dame like Glorianne. So to be clear, you're mad that he ran away from Glorianne? Yes. Because you wouldn't run away from Glorianne if she wanted you. Yes. But she's made it clear that she doesn't. This little drama is wrapping up quite nicely. It will once I smash Elmer John's head like a jug. Um... You must have smashed yeah. a lot of jugs in your day. Yes, my father was a jugsmith, and I hated him! Jugsmith? It's a real thing. Okay, um, but is that really a good reason? Yeah, I want to see if there's anything new, anything else, really. What's behind I everything? I want to join the army so I can find my place, my purpose. Glorianne doesn't want me. I have come to terms with that. 
Maybe in the army I can find some brotherhood. Some kinship with other people who maybe have signed up for the same reasons as me. A broken heart. And a desire to break heads. Like jugs. Yeah. At least he is he is determined that it, it's it's okay if he doesn't have Glorian because it is her decision. Um, yeah, so Listen, Buster, we need you. My name is Bosco. I know. But... Listen, Bosco, we need you. Okay, good. Look out, Elmer John. I'm coming to smash her head like a jug. Yeah, go get him. If he's there. Honestly, I forget what I did with him. Yeah, well, smash somebody's head at least. Alright, and my score today... Due to your exceptional job performance, you were given 30 gold for your shift. No, I don't have the others, or I don't have the military ones. Okay. See, I've only got one option. Oh, the war room, because I was requested. To go see the queen and her consort. Which is exactly why we must start using them immediately. The risk is too great. We need more time to study the long-term repercussions. Um, I don't want to summon any more, like, demonic or demon entities. A luxury we can ill afford. Your Majesty, Lil has arrived. Thank you, Cecil. Lil, thank goodness you're here. I've got a problem. Oh good, a 12-year-old is here. We can solve the world's problems. You have an opportunity, Your Highness. You know Tyronius of Thanatos, I believe. I've had yeah. the pleasure, I We've guess. Met. Yes, I remember this little guardsman. And Dr. B. Have you met Dr. Beatrix von Matterhorn Lil? Yes. I have. She works at the hole in the ground by the edge of town. Yes, I, I mean, it's an archaeological dig site, but yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, she's the one who gave me the chronometer 3000 on my first day. Ah, so she does have access to power crystal technology. I might have known. Power crystal technology powers all the tools that I use. The chronometer is not anything special. Wait, Lil has had access to power crystal technology this whole time? Maybe it's not as dangerous as we imagined. She seems fine. She's 12. We don't know that. It's still too early. How long can we wait? How many brave soldiers of the Sprawl must give their lives before we use the tools we have available? Let me fill you in on what's going on here. The Mages Guild feels that if they had access to power crystals, they could hold back the enemy and maybe even win the war outright. Okay, so why don't they go buy some? I know a guy in an alley. You know what? I'm gonna stop there. It's starting to sound weird. They want all the crystals, access to every dig site and existing stockpile in order to amplify their power. Yeah, that sounds like a power grab. The good doctor could simply give us the blueprints, or better yet, the working model the child has in her possession. This would allow our research to flourish in no time. Dr. Beatrix feels that there are too many unknown variables to use it safely on a larger scale. Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree with the uh, scientists. Almost every horror movie starts with ignoring the scientists. The Mage's Guild is and always has been reckless. 
There's no way I'm handing my research over to you. Not until I see the full effects on my human test guinea pig here. Yeah. Wait, what? We both knew what this was. Well, Lil, you've been using power crystals at the guard shed. What do you think? Are they too dangerous? Uh, yeah. They are way too dangerous. I use the Chronometer 3000 under very specific circumstances. You start manipulating time out there in the everyday world, who knows where it could lead? Yeah, we could do all kinds of things that would mess with the time and flow and... That's why there are... Um, in Star Trek there are people that even, uh, they hunt down people that try to manipulate time. Spoken like a scientist. Do you have a master's degree? She's 12. How many times do I have to tell you people? I'm 12. Thank you for your counsel. I always appreciate having multiple opinions when it comes to big decisions. I have made up my mind. Dr. B will continue to oversee Lil's progress with the Chronometer 3000, and it will stay out of the hands of the Mages Guild until we can be certain that it is safe to use in this war. Then at least allow the Guild access to the Crystal Reserve for the sake of the Sprawl's future. No. For the time being, the Reserve shall remain under my control. For the time being. My decision is final, Tyronius. You will find that I am not as easily swayed by you as my father was. Alright, so that is... Oh, we can talk. I guess that doesn't trigger a talking... I'm glad calmer heads prevailed. At least for now. Why the princess listens to you, I will never understand. Well, that makes two of us. It's like you're the only two people in the dead mum's club. My mother's terrible. That should count for something. Maybe she's terrible because you're just not Hopefully a your good words person. will not sway Desdemona on future matters. I'm just here to support my lady love. This choice has been eating her up inside. It's an important decision, and I want to do anything I can to help. I think she made a good choice. With you, I mean. Okay, now... Is she still available, or... There Thanks we go. Thanks for your insight, Lil. I'm sorry to keep putting you in this position. Tacos. I need tacos. There's Fireball Canyon, Kaladar, and of course, Petrard, Marva, and the Sprawl smack dab in the middle. Hey, you spoke well today, Lil. One more message for you today. I was instructed to tell you to head over to Malcolm's to meet the advisors. Good luck. Oh, joy. What do they want? Oh, I see there's nobody in the, uh, in the cell. What I don't understand is why would they have summoned her to a meeting without us there? Where's the fun in that? Without at least one of us there. And we all know it should have been me. You really believe that, don't you? When it comes down to the serious, important things that affect this kingdom, I think they'd rather take advice from the strategic mind of a ranking military officer. If it's in battle, sure. Rather than the two cents of a goofy, hopped-up lunatic with questionable taste in fashion. Or a lousy court jester. That was a good dig. 
Yeah, ouch! We were both in the firing line on that one. Well, all that being said, you still weren't asked to join Ted Quorum, but she was. And she is here. What? She is here. She's here. She's here. Lil is here. I really have to work on my subtlety. <laughs> Ah, Lil, you're here. We heard you got summoned to talk to the Queen and her new choice of partner for some kind of special quorum. How was it? Was it boring? What kind of boring things did they talk about while you were there? Tell us. Um, yeah, I shouldn't say. I think say. if they wanted you to know what they talked about at the meeting, they would have invited you. She won't tell us anything. She's as useless as you two are. I take offense to that. Offense to what? Sorry, I got distracted. Can I go now? You're dismissed. Yeah, it's... They've just made me a little pawn in the guard booth, and... Um, let's go back to Garvey's shop, although... I don't think I can afford anything. Oh, it's raining. Welcome to Garby's Emporium of Wonder. Lil, about time you showed up. I've had every mage in town come by the shop today trying to buy up all the power crystals. Really? You mean you don't have any left? I wouldn't have if I didn't hide a few away from my best customer. I'm your only customer. You were my only customer, but now that I cornered the mage market, I don't know if I'll be able to keep these crystals in stock. Well, the good ones, anyway. The mages didn't seem to have too much interest in the cheapo ones. Well, maybe you could disguise them, the cheapo ones as the real ones. Hey, by the way, before you get to shopping, this blowtorch you sold me with Fosse carved onto it, I've had the hardest time selling it. Maybe you'll want it back. Might come in handy. And I'll sell it to you for just four gold. Uh, sure. Okay. I don't think I need his book anymore. Uh, these went down a dollar. Uh, but I can sell both of those. And that would allow me to get either two more crystals, but I will have 14. So I have to think about what I, um, what I would like to do. Um, and I'm thinking I might, um, I haven't really had too much with the Dakota ring. Um, I think I'd rather do an x-ray. And then that gives me, that's eight, nine, no, eight, yeah, eight, 10, 14. So I will have just enough um, I will have just enough, uh, power crystals to fully charge everything. And now we can go into the tavern. Lil, how goes the battle of the Southern Gate? Same old. How are things around here holding up? Great! Business is better than ever. Something about war and the idea of impending doom really gets people out to the bar. Yeah, because they want to get drunk and That's forget about the war. good? You bet it is! If this keeps up, we'll finally be able to get this place up to code. You could just hire the rats. Then we can get rid of the rats. We don't have rats! 
I mean, we do, but technically they have us. Turns out they own the building and we just rent from them. But if we make enough money, we can buy out from under them. As far as landlords go, they aren't the worst. I could do without all the hissing. Hey, that reminds me. Lil, you got a letter in the mail. Do rats hiss? How did that rem... Never mind. A letter? From who? From Hamish. A letter from Dad? Gimme! Alright. Hey, sweet pea. How's everything back home? I'm doing okay here. I've gotten to know a lot of the guys. Then when they don't come back from battle, I get the chance to get to know a few more. I miss you. I know you might be scared right now, but don't be. It'll take tougher stuff than this little war to do in your old dad. Please let me know that you're all right. Or even if you're not. I need to hear how you're doing. I love you, Lil. Dad. Love you too, Dad. But what should I write back to him? If I tell him things are tough here, he might worry and get distracted in battle. But if I tell him I'm doing well, he might feel like I don't need him and then get distracted in battle. He's easily distracted. He needs to focus. Oh boy, neither answer seems right. Are you talking to me? No. Oh, she's talking to whoever's playing. Um, I want to be positive. Lil, writes a, Lil will write a letter that suggests everything is going great in order to make her father feel better. Are you sure? Yes. There. That should do it. Hey, Arda. Mind making sure this gets to where it needs to go? Sure thing, Lil. That was a short letter. Okay. We're all thinking of your dad, Lil. Alright. Okay, and that's the same. There. Well, if it isn't my old pal, Lil. Oh, so now you remember me. Always did, kiddo. Just had to play it cool while at my legitimate place of business. My former legitimate place of business, that is. Oh yeah, I got caught gambling. Oh no, what happened? Tough to say, kid. Could have been any number of things. Change in management, downsizing on account of the war. It was probably the illegal gambling operation you were running out of the concession stand. Tough to say, kid. Regardless, I'm here on official bookie business. I've come to collect a debt from Hamish. Uh, sounds about right. How much does he owe you? 30 gold, and I've got the marker to prove it. Sorry, I don't have that kind of money on me. Either come back tomorrow and I'll see if I have the money, or wait for Hamish to come back from the war. Eh, both those options sound lousy. Tell you what, let's forget the debt altogether. But tell Hamish I ain't taking any more of his markers. See you around. Oh good, yes, absolutely. He'll forgive the debt and in exchange never bet again. Sounds good to me. Lil, I'm being discreet. Isla bet me five gold that I couldn't steal a bottle of fizzy when Arda's distracted. How are you planning to do that? You couldn't even steal a key. I figure if I wait long enough, one of the rats will bite her and she'll freak out and maybe run around a bit. Solid plan. Okay, um... I think that is everything that I can do for the day. I think I've done everything I need to do, but are you sure you're ready to hit the hay? Um, yeah, hit the hay. <coughs> Grumpkin T. Dankworth and Welp. Reunited with his darling whelp, Grumpkin T. Dankworth was a changed man. Together, the two traveled through Kaladar, sailed Lake Inez, and even summered in Fireball Canyon. 
He laughed as he had never laughed in all his days, and their nights were filled with food and wine, music and love. They ran, holding hands through fields of flowers. On one such sprint, Grumpkin clutched his chest. His heart had overflowed. More accurately, he suffered a massive heart attack. Try as he might to revive his former master and now true love, Welp was unable to, unable to resuscitate the old man. A simple funeral was held, and the widower Welp counted himself lucky to have ever had such a love as this. As for his substantial riches, they were held by Mr. Dung, head of BS, until such a time as Mr. Dankworth's will was read. The old man had donated the entirety of his fortune to the GLA. A small flower garden was built in his honor outside of their headquarters. Julian. Thanks to his timely arrival back in the sprawl, Julian was able to prepare a lavish birthday party for his best friend, Gary. Every goblin, troll, halfling, cyclops, and mole person who, were, who was anyone was there. It was a bright spot in what had otherwise been a dark few months for the sprawl. As a birthday present, Julian gave Gary a pure, unrefined power crystal that he received from the visiting miners. The glint of its unearthly glow reflected in Gary's eyes as he inserted the powerful, powerful crystal into his practice wand. He thanked Julian profusely for this mo most precious present. It never left his sight from that day on. The next day, Julian presented the plans he was carrying to city council. These plans detailed an extensive tunnel system to be dug underneath the walls of the sprawl, which would allow food to be secretly and safely moved into the sprawl right under the enemy's nose. After a short period of deliberation, the council realized just how hungry they were, they all were, and unanimously approved the plan. Someone will be arriving to start digging the tunnel system soon, but it's all on the up and up and pretty hush hush. With new, the Duchy of Scarborough, with new plans for bringing food into the city, working their way through the bureaucracy of the sprawl, there were even rations for the refugees from Scarborough to eat, and a space was made for them at the refugee camp, springing up down at the docks. The Duchess was not impressed by her new surroundings, but to be honest, she's a very difficult person to please. Swift justice was visited upon the traitor, who lowered the drawbridge of Castle Scarborough in the middle of the night, allowing the enemy to enter and take control of the duchy. The villain was hanged in the town square. Brutal, certainly, but this is war, and it's better to be safe than sorry. Plus, it made for a fine day's entertainment, as there are no games in the sprawl to keep people amused. Sprawl Victorious. The garrison stationed at the Sprawl's secret western food depot successfully repelled the invading Marvel forces. The Sprawl's reserved food stores are safe from the enemy's greedy hands and empty stomachs. Bosco's repressed feelings and lifetime of compensating at the gym led him to fight impressively on the battlefield, inspiring all around him. Elmer John went home and talked things over with Glorianne. They called the engagement back on and got married soon after. 